In this video, I'm going to lay out the roadmap to getting massive commercial jobs. There's essentially five levels that I'm going to talk you guys through in this video. And I'm going to start off with the hardest way to actually get them, which if you're like me, whenever I first started my business, you think that this is the right way. I kind of thought this was the only way to go about getting them. But uh, as you guys will see, that's not really the case. I'm going to bring you guys all the way up until the fifth level, which we're going to talk about uh, towards the end of the video, which is pretty much the cheat code of this entire video and actually help my buddy Chris land himself and some of his coaching clients hundreds of thousands of dollars in jobs. And I mean that I'm not just throwing out numbers to hook you into this video. Some people comment on my videos and they're like, there's no way that people are making this much money. And uh, I never take it personally because it's more of a reflection of what they believe is possible within themselves and what they can actually achieve rather than, you know, what's really possible and what other companies are actively doing day in and day out. So the first step in this entire process, if you guys are watching this video because you want to land some big commercial accounts this year, you know, you kind of want to sink your teeth into uh, getting some larger accounts. The first step is just knowing that it can be done and knowing that you're somebody who can actually achieve the same results. So until you know within yourself that this is something you can do, um, you really are kind of kind of struggle because you're always going to be kind of fighting against that belief and it's going to be holding you back. But before we get too deep into this video, I do want to let you guys know that we are actually doing a giveaway with Southeast Softwash. We are giving away an Easy Max skid here in just about a week. If you guys want to enter the giveaway, check out the first link in the comment section and the description. All you got to do is be a premium platinum or ultimate subscriber of Quote IQ and fill out the form below and you will be entered to win. Also, you can try any tier of Quote IQ right now for a dollar at myquoteiq.com. With that being said, let's go ahead and jump right into it. First things first, let's talk about the way that you would think that you would get most of these jobs. And I actually had a comment on one of my videos and it said, what is the script that you're using to get these commercial jobs? And basically by saying this, the person who was watching the video was assuming that we are going to these commercial properties, walking in in person, making a good impression, and then picking up their business, which is something that I recently tested out. I didn't think that it worked. I've tried it in the past, never had a ton of success with it, but we recently did a $10,000 job in this business complex with a bunch of other doctor's offices around it. So what I did was, is I just took flyers and I went around to each individual business office. I actually recorded this as well, but unfortunately I put the phone too far away from where the mic was and then the audio got cut out. So I'm just going to kind of talk to you guys through um, the idea behind it and kind of what that script looked like. So the idea is we are doing a job that's very close in proximity to these other businesses. I would walk in with a flyer and say, hey guys, we are doing a job um, that's right around the corner. You guys probably know the building. I would even name drop the building so that way it gives us even more credibility with the person that I'm speaking with. And I would say, hey, I'm just here to kind of drop off a flyer and let you guys know if you guys need any work. We are here. We can give you guys a quick quote. And so in theory, you would think that this would be the best way to go about getting commercial business because you're walking into the business, you're talking with somebody at the door, but what you get hit with is the gatekeeper or um, the person who's sitting behind the front desk. And nine times out of 10, you know, they probably get solicitors every once in a while. And their job is to solely stop the solicitors at the door, take the flyer from them or take whatever marketing material they brought in and basically tell them, yeah, we'll, we'll pass this on and uh, we'll, we'll get back with you. So essentially I walked into probably four or five of these places and uh, we didn't hear back from anybody. And it's not for a lack of them being dirty. It's more of a lack of me not getting to the right person. I even tried to add some scarcity in. I said, you know, we'll even give you guys a discount because we're already out here uh, doing some work. If you guys want to get on the schedule here soon, doesn't really matter because you're not talking to anyone who's making a purchasing decision. You're talking to uh, the person at the front desk. And like I said, they're whole job is to gatekeep anybody in the back. So nine times out of 10, I doubt that they even get the flyer. They probably throw it in the trash can, whatever the case may be. I've also, I've brought my son to the doctor, my son's doctor's office, like the the whole parking lot needed to be washed, restriped. The building was completely dirty. And I asked the doctor as we were in the back, I said, hey, you know, who handles the maintenance on the property? I'd love to, uh, you know, get you guys a quote. And she was like, oh, we'll ask for Jennifer at the, at the desk when you guys go to, you know, schedule your next appointment. So I got up to the desk. I said, hey, you know, is Jennifer here? Oh no, she's not here. That's always the case. You guys, if you ever go into any of these businesses and try to solicit for business, I guarantee you the person that you need to talk to is not there. Oh no, Jennifer's not here today. Oh, okay, great. Well, I just want to leave her a quote. Is there any way I can get a business card or can I get her number? Oh no, I can't give you any of that information. Do you have a um, flyer or anything with you? At the time, I didn't have any flyers. I didn't have any any business cards on me because, like I said, I wasn't anticipating trying to solicit business. However, it just goes to show that anytime you handle it in this way, the person who makes the purchasing decisions is not there. 
and um, likely the likelihood of them actually getting your marketing materials is very low. Even when I made it to the back, even when we knew the doctor, we had established a relationship with the doctor, I still could not um, get the person's information in order to get them over a quote. So it just goes to show that going in person in theory is a great idea. You would think, hey, I'm going in person. I'm, I'm going to make a, a, a personal connection with somebody who works at this office and I'm going to try to solicit business. It's not a great way to go. It's kind of a waste of time uh, in my personal uh, experience with trying to do it. I've never landed a job this way and I have approached countless, countless businesses in this way. So going in person, I wouldn't advise it. Even if you have a good script, it doesn't really matter. Interruption marketing is going to be way number two. We've actually landed jobs through Facebook ads. Now, it's number two because Facebook ads is a terrible way to go about targeting large commercial accounts because for Facebook, I don't really like using Facebook's targeting as much. Um, I talk specifically about that in um, my ad strategy. With regards to Facebook, it's really hard to dial in and really target the people you need to target who make the purchasing decisions for you know these larger businesses. Even with Google ads, even with me running Google ads, you can get in front of people searching for commercial keywords. It's just another thing to actually target people who are property managers and things uh, of that nature. So it's a little bit more difficult. I'll give you guys another tip with regards to, to Facebook and Google. The more parameters you put around um, some of the targeting that you're doing, the smaller your audience gets, which means you have a less amount of people that you can get in front of. It just makes your ad dollars not go as far. So number two is interruption marketing, running Facebook ads. I actually recently did a video breakdown of a video ad that I did that did over $13,000 in one month. So if you guys are interested in checking that out, I'll leave it linked in the comment section and the description. Absolutely free. Check it out. Link below. All right. So then number three, we have Google. So these are people actively searching. We've talked a lot in the past couple of videos about intent versus interruption. Interruption is people are scrolling. We're popping in front of them, trying to take them off of wherever they're scrolling. Intent is they're actively searching us out through something like Google, some type of search engine, search engine. So Google is number three or, you know, active people actively searching is the number three best way in order to um, get these large commercial accounts for a couple different reasons, because obviously anybody on Google is already vetted. They have a rating system, which you guys know Google reviews um, and all those companies with the highest Google reviews are obviously uh, some of the best companies in the area. So if you're somebody that's looking to get large commercial accounts and you're not on Google, you need to get on Google within local domination course. We teach you guys how to opt optimize your Google My Business page, as well as how to run Google ads in order to um, not only rank long-term, but also be able to rank quickly um, and know how to place those ads to get in front of the right people so that way you guys can start landing some of these big commercial accounts. So Google, number three, um, that's, a, that's a big way on how we get a lot of these jobs currently. But the number four way is a semi-cheat code doing work for one of these commercial accounts and then doing all the other work for them. So if you guys remember, probably about a year ago at this point, we did a hotel cleaning. The hotel cleaning ended up being like $40,000. We had about four days to clean as much of it as possible because they were having this big event and they waited until the absolute last minute to try to find a service provider for this building. Um, well, the company that found us does all the property management for pretty much every hospital or doctor's office under this one uh, umbrella company uh, within Louisiana. I'm not going to give away specific names because obviously uh, that's a contract that we value and we don't want anybody else coming in on it. Uh, but we did this one huge job for them, $40,000 in four days. It took us a couple other days after that to kind of get everything they wanted done. However, we did such a good job and we stepped up in a time where they needed us that now the company that handles the property management for this umbrella company actually sends us all of their work for all of their facilities. I believe they have like 40 or 50 facilities uh, across Louisiana. So anytime they need one cleaned, they go ahead and send it over to us and then we go out there and take care of it. So doing a job once for a company and then handling all the other companies, like for example, another one that we got was a gas station. Uh, actually, my, my partner Kale went into one of these gas stations and he was like, hey, you know, we offer parking lot striping and uh, cleaning and we clean the canopy canopies and we do a bunch of uh, work for gas stations. And then the gas station owner said, that's awesome. We're actually looking for somebody to clean this one. And we have six other ones. So you'll find that when you start landing some of these commercial jobs, a lot of these commercial accounts are tied in together. We landed a, a while back, we landed a, um, a Burger King franchise. The dude had 10 different Burger Kings. We no longer service those, but at the time it was like, wow, that, that was 10. Like, so the beautiful thing about some of this commercial work is you get in front of the right person 
person once, then you can service all of their properties. Because generally, these guys are looking for somebody who does a good job to do a really good job on their property, and then just to continue service um, for as long as possible because they don't want to have to do paperwork with another person. They don't want to have to, you know, develop a relationship or find somebody they can trust or find somebody that pre presents them a good price. So you take care of them once and they take care of you with all the work that they bring to you later on. So doing work for one and then doing all of their other properties is a great way to go about getting more commercial work. With that being said, let's get into number five, and this is the cheat code of the video, and that is finding the person who owns the property and then contacting them directly, which you guys think might be pretty difficult, but there's actually softwares that you guys can use in order to find the person who owns a specific property and contact them directly. Within the Local Domination 2 course, Chris actually breaks down exactly how he does this and uh, he actually shows you guys an email that he sends to um, these property owners and in the video he actually lands a job from one of the emails that he sent live within the video so it's pretty cool not only does he show you the uh, tools that he uses he shows you the emails that he sends and he also showed um one of the success stories from that so if you guys are interested in that check out the local domination 2 course but being able to find a dirty building find the owner and then contact that owner with an offer is going to be the number one way because it's a way that you can surpass all of those gatekeepers and get right to the source. I'm not saying that it works every single time, but uh, it's one of those things that also helps from the perspective of when these commercial properties go to get quotes, typically, you know, management or upper management will say, Hey, we need to get three quotes before we pick one. Cause we want to go with whoever has the best price. When you go directly to the source in a lot of cases, you know, the, the person who owns the property is like, man, I didn't know that the property got this bad. We want to just go ahead and get it done. Since you reached out to me directly, I be, I trust that you can do a good job and they usually will just go with you. So being able to find the property manager, get to them directly, will usually be able to put you in a place where you don't necessarily have to go through um, them getting all the other quotes and having a battle with regards to quoting. So those are the five pieces that you guys need to put into place. Obviously, if you did all five, I think that would be tremendously helpful for your business. As I mentioned, number one probably isn't the best way to go about it, but it's also not the worst. I'm not saying that you can't go into any commercial facility and get a job. Uh, I'm just saying that I've tried in the past, hasn't been the best for us. But if you guys made it this far in the video, comment down below, big money, and I'll hashtag you're a real one. My name is Justin. This is Forever Self-Employed. And until next time, hustle hard. Get that money, baby. Peace.